Hey guys, this is Marine from Supia Times. Welcome back to another episode. Today I'm going to talk about if it is a great idea to start a new Supia brand builder or to invest or buy an existing one. The reason for doing this video, I've always had a big interest in shipyards and yacht builders and especially in the last few months there have been some changes again. Um, as you probably all might have read, you know, like Nobiskrug had some difficult times and went bankrupt and was bought by German entrepreneur Lars Winterst. And more recently we saw that Lloyd Werf went, filed for bankruptcy, which are the builders of the 139 meter Solaris. Um, Bulk Shipyard didn't go bankrupt, but actually was bought by investors who see an opportunity. And also, of course, you know, we have the, the case of Perini Navi, which was, uh, went into bankruptcy as well and was recently acquired by the Italian Sea Group. So in this video, I want to have a look at, you know, like, more or less 15 things to consider when you're investing in a shipyard or setting up your own sim or buying in an existing brand. So first one on the list, I think it's very important to know your intention. You know, like I think over the years I've seen many people starting up shipyards. You know, sometimes it's, it's clients who think they can build a better boat. Sometimes it's clients who are fed up with the industry and go do it themselves. Sometimes it's investment groups who think you can make a lot of money. Um, Sometimes it's people just for the fun of it. Sometimes it's for the ego. So I think it's very good to know for yourself before and when you start, if you, why are you doing it? You know, like, are you doing it to make money? Are you doing it because you're angry to the industry? Number two of the list, which is do your research. You know, like, it sounds very, very logical, but, you know, from experience, I've learned that it's not always the case. Um, luckily there is quite a few, you know, like as you might know, we, with our intelligence team and with our database system as YTIQ, we have a wealth of data and intelligence and luckily we help many of investors and a lot of existing shipyards as well with information and data. But it's not only that, you know, like it's also what is the location of your shipyard? Do you want to buy the property? Do you want to rent it? You know, like, but it's also understanding your market segment. You know, like I've seen shipyards who come first with, oh, we're going to build 35 meter sailing boats. And then they come with a 60 meter explorer and then a 50 meter fast motor yacht. You know, like it's, I think it's very good to understand the market, where you want to be, what's your place going to be. Um, so do your research. And if you need some help, let us know. I do think that the, the owner or the, the, the investor behind it needs to get involved you know it's the, the yard building business is a very personal business because you know let's say you're going to build 60 meter motor yards it's not you know like you're going to have tens of or hundreds or thousands of clients you know like if you get three clients you do pretty well you know so and those three clients are probably very wealthy people who like to do business with people as well and understand who is behind this company, who am I giving my money to. So you need to be involved yourself. When you take over an existing brand, start your own brand, you need 99 out of 100 times start with a project on speculation because probably it's not very likely uh, a client is going to give a new ship or a new company straight away in order for a contract because how do you know they're going to deliver they don't run away with your money mess up your boat all these kind of things so you need to start you need to be prepared to pay the money even if it's for yourself you need to probably put in a project yourself i would say be careful with concepts because Concepts are very nice, you know, it's nice for publicity PR, but it's also very confusing sometimes. And if you keep doing it year after year, people think of you, ah, oh, it's this company with this concept. They don't take you serious. Plus, it sounds like, you know, you don't know your market, you're just trying everything, pushing out these, all these different concepts. So be careful with them. I always say with when you're starting a, a new brand or reviving an, an existing brand, work with top designers because you know the brand of the designer is very very important because you know like if you have an unknown name for yourself your brand is your first what you're going to do if you take one of the well-known top designers it already elevates your brand in your company it also probably gives a bit of a signal 
um, that you're serious in this market. And of course, well-known designers are expensive, but they're worth it. Point seven on the list is and involve the yard brokers. You know, yard brokers have a wealth of information. Um, even before you start doing your speculation project, you can also consult some yard brokers because they probably can give you some insight from the client side. You know, like does it work? What is their feedback? You know, and they've been on so many boats, so they, you know, use their knowledge and also their knowledge on the market, what their clients are looking for. So definitely get the brokers involved and speak to them all. Number eight on the list, I have you know built your brand. Well, the, generally the marketing and PR around it. I think you know very strong brand is important, but it's also you know like what I've seen in the past as well is that some companies are a bit too enthusiastic and they you know like the PR and the marketing is almost go you know getting more attention on the actual building of the boat and you know like some companies spend a fortune on, on PR advertising which I'm very much in favor of of course because we sell advertising so you know please continue to do so but if I have to give you advice probably I'd say you know like first set up everything do your research get everything sorted get your first boat in production and then start building the brand of course with building the brand you shouldn't be too late because you know it takes time it goes slowly but especially with communicating you know like basically make sure you have everything in order before you start communicating projects delivery dates and things because too often we have seen that companies say yeah the boat's going to be ready next year and then it takes another two years for the before the boat is actually being built if it gets built at all so have a proper marketing plan and strategy but don't be too quick with to communicate everything and number nine of the list is a bit similar as what i said before it's more about managing expectations you know like if you say you're going to deliver a boat in 2023 then make sure you deliver a boat in 2023 or if you say you're going to unveil it or things like that and don't make empty promises because it's very bad for your reputation and the yachting industry is a very small market and people will remember these kind of things pricing number 10 on the list also very important um, of course we all want to have you know the a top price for our project and uh, you know asking prices are all fantastic in this market but the actual sales prices are often very different um, with new shipyards we sometimes see they they sell their first project at a very low price i think and, and that could be fine if it's a strategy you know you buy a project from the market you prepare to lower your margins because you want to get this project out there fair enough um, I do think you should not sell a project on the cost price, at least, I mean, unless you're prepared to finance it, but I think, you know, you need to accept, if, if, you, if you build it a lot, you need to be prepared to put in the money yourself, but it's also, you know, like what we see is that if you sell one boat at a low price, maybe two, you know, the market knows, often knows that even there is confidentiality agreements and things like that, people figure it out or hear it from other people so be very careful with your pricing and know what you're doing and if you start giving massive discounts now people are going to expect it and before you know it you're becoming this company who sells boats too cheaply so be careful one of the most important things in any business are the people and i think in the yachting industry it's not any different i think what is slightly different in this business is that it's there's a lot of people who, who, who have been in this business for a very long time, which is very good because a lot of the knowledge stays in this business. But it can also be very much a danger by, you know, like having people doing the same thing as they did before, even if it doesn't work. So, you know, hiring the right people is extremely important and the right people could be from this yard business, but it could also be very well from outside this yard business. I think, you know, I think it's good if it's a mix because it's very good to get some outside perspectives in the yachting market as well. I mean, quality obviously, you know, is a very important thing. Um, and I mean, everybody builds the best quality, everybody builds fantastic boats, um, they will claim. But I think, especially with your first boat, make sure that it's really good. And quality doesn't mean all kinds of crazy gadgets, folding things. I think I would even try to stay away from too many complicated things which can break because one way or the other, you know, like your first boat is going to have some problems and which is fine, you know, I think people accept it and so also about how you deal with it. But, 
you know, make sure that you build it to the best you can and definitely don't show an unfinished boat at any event, boat shows, open days, things like that, because people will always remember and judge you by it. So if you're going to showcase the boat, make sure it's like 100% perfect. Of course, it's different when clients coming to visit you when the boat is under construction and see it under construction. But when you put it in a yard show, make sure it's top of the bill. Well, I think one important thing which we all agree on is sustainability. And I think, you know, for, not only for new shipyards, for any shipyards these days, you need to be focusing on sustainability because simply put, that is just the future of this business. And it's the boat you're building, but also how you operate your shipyard and your company. Number four on the list is very important as well. It's about warranty. You know, I think um, it's nice if you complete your first boat, you're building your second one, but you need to understand as well, warranty is going to cost you money. And especially with your first boat, it's not going to be perfect. That's fine, but you need to deal with issues. And I think um, it's extremely important because it also, you know, this is very important in the experience of your first customer, how he, how he sees you and how he sees the future of your company, because he should be your main ambassador. So dealing with warranty is very important and make sure you reserve some money for this. Last but not least, number 15 on the list is you need to be patient in this business because, you know, building a boat probably takes you two, three, four, five years. So let's say, you know, in 10 years time, if you have done, you know, three, four, five boats, you know, 40, 50 meter plus, you've done a good job, but then you're still a very much a newcomer in this business. So it's not a business where you're going to make some quick money, but it's certainly a lot of fun. So I would definitely recommend you to come into this business, but be patient. Let me give you two examples of, of two different approaches of companies who are now very successful these days. And I think the first one is well known as Cantieri della Marca. I think they are around for around 10 years. And, you know, like for, I think they, they keep announcing sales of, of, of Explorer boats and they started with boats around 25 meter Explorer yachts. And what they did well is they really focused on their niche, which was, you know, building Explorer yachts. Secondly, they had a very good team. And I think, you know, like it's, um, it's a very experienced team and they're very involved, you know, from sales, the operations, and, but also the partners. And they, you know, these guys really know, knew what they were doing, still know what they're doing. And they built, you know, like what they also did well is, you know, the boats they built were very good. You know, like it was not only nice on paper and a great story and a great plan, but the execution was also done very well. And they received great acclaim for it. And in the last 10 years, Cantillo de Marca has built around 23, 24 yachts and they are all cruising the oceans now. And actually, you know, their, their model worked as well because they actually built explorer yachts that went exploring, you know, the, the, their 25, 27 meter boats actually went crossing the ocean on their own bottom and really exploring and traveling around the world. So it's a really cool company. And you know, the, the, the confirmation of their success is as well, you know, the number of boats they have on the construction, which are, you know, more than 10, you know, as of today, probably more close to 12, 13. And it's quite an amazing story. And I think it's really nice to see these guys doing well. Another nice example is, is Sylvia. It started around 20 years ago with a German entrepreneur, Guido Kruss. He, he had a very different approach. He started building, you know, bigger yards in Australia. The, the, the first one was the 73 meter silver. Um, I think what is unique about his approach is that he is he's a client himself who started his own shipyard, but really went through the whole production and only offered the boats for sale when they were finished. Um, and I think that's also a very clever approach because in that way you don't have uh, to deal with a client besides yourself, but you, you know, you build the boats for yourself so you can build them really quick, efficient, um, and then offer them on the market when they are ready. So, because, you know, like building for a client is of course very nice, but you know, the things might change, you know, like the, the project team was checking on the quality and when you build them for yourself, you don't all have all these things. Of course, you know, you want the best boat for yourself. Over the years, they have built five yards and the small and all over 70 meters. And the latest one is the 85 meter bolt, which has been very well received at all the major yard shows. Um, right now they're building a sister ship of Bolt, but also a very cool 36 meter uh, catamaran project called Space Cat. Then the success of the company got noticed as well because in 2017, 
um, Silver Yards announced they had a new majority shareholder from China. So these two companies, while their approach is very different, you know, they have been around now for 10 years plus, but they have become a success and they, you know, like they've become established players and which is very nice to see. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments or if you are an investor and you're looking for more data or insight on the market, get in touch with us.